It's Mario time now. of Infinity Reprise. So what do we want to do with this? So what have been going... What have been going for in the updates that I've been making to my old... It's mostly just to condense everything, to try to enhance the player experience, which it's, it's not all that hard. Got down here. Yep. So this is the old. Oh. Auto piece switch timer. Design. So, let's see how long it takes just to run. So the P switch is going to hit, and everything is going to kick on. Let's see how long it takes from when we hit, when we come in, and the first P switch is triggered, and next one is triggered, which would end the first wave. That. 
that's all gone. Done. It's out. Right out. So, eat these. Sit. Then, here. Take this guy. Set that there. Make sure that we just blocked off. I've been doing this way too much. I don't even know. I just don't even know. Gee, do you mind? I'm trying to have a conversation with myself on the internet. function to uh to drag these ground blocks and drop them over here because you can't put a ground block on track it doesn't work so if you just copy them you'll just put them under whatever blocks you place because whenever you place the blocks it punches out the ground block underneath so it's just to make sure that everything just to make sure that everything stays nice and pretty as we go through this whole thing. <laughs> and the fact that those are embedded in a wall uh, doesn't affect the operation of the timer. So we need some one-way walls. Sets. Over there. As we come in, it's gonna trigger it. We don't even need a note block. We don't need to bounce it up. We just have to run it under the friggin' dude. Bill Blaster. And that'll just trigger it. It's wonderful. Okay, so this is our new P switch timer using the current design. Super compact. Incredibly efficient, outrageously dense in terms of just how much we're using the space that we have available. Like, we're using the one way walls, we're using the tracks and the overlap properties of the hard blocks on the tracks, all the weird particulars of that. We're using the gravity of the stage to to draw our P-switch down like a fucking hourglass. Like, 
I'm doing a lot here. It's relatively little. I mean, especially compared to that, like, 36 block monstrosity that I had there. I mean, it's not to say that that wasn't valuable in its own right. As, you know, stepping stone my way to where I am now. But I'm glad I'm not using that gigantic design. Alright, so now we're gonna hit play, and we're gonna see how long this takes. And if the next, if the second P-Switch ends at like 257, we'll know, like, we're right there. Boom. Nintendo. Now we just give it a minute. So we're using a fraction of the space that we were before. I mean, seriously, like, a third of the overall space that we were using. This design is not something that I came to entirely alone, but I had to sort of figure it out myself before I really grasped what I was doing with it. Thank you, Austin. Uh, so, after I put out the original Cooper people picked them up and started making their own, and one person took the builds from the original Kubari and kept pushing from there, and then just continued to put his own spin on things. So, I mean, I've effectively got like a divergent path, the progression of time from the original Cooperina with the way that my builds changed and the way that his builds changed. And so I didn't find this out until after, you know, I'd build like K4, K... Yeah, it was after K4. And he also had four arenas that he'd put together. We started talking on Reddit. And the way that he set up his spawners thought it's pretty cool, but I didn't grasp it first until I was messing around last night and sort of came to it by myself. And then it all fell into place. So instead of stacking them all vertically, stack them horizontally. Here, set that down, that in, block, countdown six, one, two, three, four, six, boom. There's our intermediate uh, loading shaft, and then boom, like 
You, that's that's it. That's literally it. It's so nice. It's ridiculous how freaking nice this is. So check it. Oh, drops them down there. Cues up the next wave. That's what the coin was for. Afterward. Let's drop down. There you go. There's your wave. Oh. And then let's see up here. This one's sitting there. It's ready to go. It's beautiful. It is absolutely maximizing the space. Can you make a don't move level? Uh, probably. I mean, I hit one. But if you really don't move through the whole thing, it'll kill you. That was kind of the point. So that's there. So here. space to mess with. since the beginning. They're good. But I don't like having this one wall in the arena with a hitbox. I hate that. So what I've been switching to is wall pipes. And then instead of triggering a POW at the end of the arena, it triggers uh, a cloud launcher allows you to fly into the wall pipe. <laughs> so I've already got my wall pipe right here that I can just stick where I need it. The... It's just a matter of deciding how... how I want to do this. <laughs> I mean, I can really just keep what I have right here, that would work. Like, I can take the POW block out of it. Sort of notch this off. Everything would be totally cool. But another thing that I want to try to do in this build is to try to magic coop proof this arena been a persistent issue, and I recently learned that Magic Koopas will very plainly turn your one-way walls into stuff. Something that I'd seen, but I didn't quite register until I saw someone talking about it on Reddit, very specifically, and I was like, well, that makes perfect sense. So what the hell can we do? First of all, I'm thinking about taking the entire arena, the whole room right now, and raising it with a block. I want to do that because I want to put an extra layer of beneath the room, so that if they blow out those blocks, 
they won't just lead to pits. Seriously, one of my least favorite things about this level. I mean, it's funny, like, I'll laugh. It's happened to me, and uh, I laughed about it. But, seriously, just missing, like, that one clutch jump, and you just go straight down, dead. You're done. since I came back and really looked at this one. I didn't realize the arena was so big. Like... I don't know if I could make... much bigger than this. If at all. And I mean, it's... it's perfect. Three blocks on either side. Block on the top and bottom. This room is massive. That. It's 18 by 11. <clears throat> yeah, 18 wide by 11 tall. It's massive. That is in massive. The original Cooperina was like 13 by. smoothly. I cleared out the clutter up top already. Got everything situated really neatly. Right now, I'm trying to decide how to change the exit lock to the, uh, the cloud dispenser and wall pipe that I've been using uh, for the last few of them. I don't like having munchers in the arena because I don't like having a wall with a hitbox. Like, I think that those are some of the worst kinds of deaths. Like, you jump, you juke away from something, you're going to grab another friggin' spiny hat or something, and you nick those munchers. Dead. If you were in the other corner, it wouldn't happen. This is just leaves and spiny hats, yeah. That's another thing that I really wanted to do here. That's why it's called Points of Infinity. Because I really wanted to build this around the use of the spiny hat. And so by design, take, uh, being able to give the player spiny hats makes the room itself mostly indestructible. Because I had to make it so that they couldn't break it really. Trying to figure out how I can give it's right here. In all honesty, I could just take them out. It's kind of things happen. Come on. But I also get nervous about this block being blown out, because I've seen that happen. These magic Koopas, they don't... they respect nothing. They... they have no allegiance to anyone except themselves. 
They're the absolute worst. True vagabonds. So I can use this shoe right here. At least as a base. Okay, so the enemy setup right now is not bad. It's not really bad. You know, I have like the boos and the bloopers in there. So that you have enemies that are constantly pursuing you. <laughs> you know, you have things that are coming after you, uh, regardless of the terrain, platforms, anything. That's why I like. That's why I like bullseye bills. That's why I like cheap cheeps, especially if they're on fire. They're amazing. things that I try to do 
ever go in and I do these revamps is I don't want to change the available platforms. Dude, I love the big birds. Up. Totally. That'd be great. When I redo these levels, I don't want to change the available platforms. I may change the aesthetics, but the platforms and their placements stay the same. The tracks aren't going to move, these platforms aren't going to move. So I'm like, what else can I change that's not... It's either not going to change the way that everything operates from top to bottom, it's going to make the whole thing run better. to move on this, but just have to give it work. A small parts to pay. So everything that's behind this all of it, but each wave of launchers will pass through it sideways without any resistance. That's one of the weirdest properties of launchers on tracks that I've encountered so far. Other launchers can pass through them from the side as if there was nothing there. But you and other mobs can't, like they're solid barriers. This is nothing you can do. So... This is popping a block right here, so we can watch what happens. see if this works the way that I think it will, the way that I would want it to work. the waves should start moving. There's no seam between the bottom 
of the bottom spawner and the, uh, the one that is transposed over. That is cool as hell. And it looks cool. Like, that's, that's the best thing about it. Is that it looks cool. take a full round for it to drop, but that's what I'm about to try to address. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to put another one right here. Uh, to serve as that, that interrupting wall that I need. Uh, when the spawners drop down, they might not fire properly. With this one right here, but like I, I need to try it. So then, what I'm gonna do is instead of putting that there, to put it right here inside the circuit. So it'll go through once, which is about seven or eight seconds, tops. Then it'll drop and trigger, and that'll be enough time for these to slide over. That's all I really need is enough time for those to slide over. As a matter of fact, I could just do this. So it'll already be on the last rotation. It ticks through all those. Done. So, seed in action. Let's go. Those slide over. Exactly like I want them to. See, they will spawn crap in me to kill me. Okay, some of them work, some of them don't. I have no. Oh, you know what? Man. Right? Test far away. Truth. Okay, so let's. Said this first round. And I mean, like I said earlier, I normally don't do this. Actually, before I start messing with it. Copy. First round of spawners exactly as they are, so that I don't risk uh, any of messing them up or anything. So let's set these all to bullseye launchers. Faster. Faster. Uh, firing velocity. Then take this guy put it right there because I seriously only need like a fraction of a second for this to work, and hopefully be long enough to move it. Actually, that won't seem like a big So you drop in. Let's go! Man, how did it still catch it? Oh, it was caught by the next one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Alright. See what I did there? Yes! Alright, so that works. And then we'll see if swapping these out 
four. The red launchers. Nope. Yeah, that is just not happening for some of these. But the Koopas were. Which I I really just do not understand why some of these work and why some of them don't. Like this is something that I started messing with while I was working on K6. Because the way that everything in K6 is set up uh, involves exploiting the way that those work. in here and try it out all five of these waves just to see what works and what doesn't. The magic hoops, those sons of a bitches. That's awesome though. That's awesome that they give no fucks. see right now when I'm totally teabagging the shit out of these magic hoops right now. <laughs> Alright, so the big boo also gives not fuck one. And see, these hoops aren't making it out. that anything giant in the top spawners can come out safely. It's a known issue. These guys right here. Just... Just for the lulls. Fire this thing up. Oh man, I really need to put some stuff right there so that magic Koopas don't jump me at the start. Holy crap, they're all firing. It's all they're all working. <gasps> oh that's too cool. And like I can't and I can't do anything. I can't get over there. Put the original first wave back over there. We'll run again. What am I gonna do about right here? I need. slide over two spaces, and that should lock them from firing once they hit their, the, the edge of their movement. Where the magic hoop is coming from. So, uh, when you land on the skull platforms, and it triggers them to drop down the tracks, you have that brief moment when all of the spawners are thrown to the right, or thrown to the left, 
and then the rightmost spawners are uh, are unblocked, and they fire at you, and that's where the magic Koopa comes from. It's from the last wave of spawners, which suddenly has an opening to take a shot at you right at the beginning, under the new design. So that's what I put the one-way walls there for, so that when they slide over, they'll be blocked off when they hit that edge. And then I won't... I won't cross the screen line again for the duration of the arena, so I won't have to worry about anything else firing at me unduly. that they're not firing until they get to that one spot, so it's good that... Oh, motherfucker! Ah, my life! Okay, now I can just spin those around, and it should work. I'm dumb as hell. That's where... That should... Won't that prevent those waves from starting at all? Yes, it will. That's why I just fixed it. It's not gonna... Moving the tracks isn't going to mess with anything that I can think of. We may still have, like, the bottom spawner fire at us. We'll deal with that as it comes. If that doesn't work, I think I may have another solution, which is fucking silly. It'll work. Let's go. 
fucking Magic Koopa. You bastard. How many are there? Jesus. Oh my god. Son of a bitch. That's that's fucking funny though. They just keep coming up to do this. You jump on one, and two more appear in its place. If it pushes you up against the top like that, it would drop you. I want that. It's not gonna go up anyway. You can always check it out. Save this in case it explodes. Right, right, right. So. Is any more. again. And see this is why this is why I go back and redo these because you know I get to approach the same things without worrying about the same space constraints. That's that's really nice. Can you not do the skulls without the tracks? If I just place the skulls out there without the tracks, when I land on them, they will go off the screen to the right. That's it. Like I need them on the tracks to drop them in, uh, to drop them into the arena basically. And I have them in the player drop chute to make sure that there's no way to get in without triggering them, having them flying around everywhere. So. Yeah, it's not it's not that they'd miss the other track, it's that they would just straight up go right off the screen. So what I'm gonna do here, the latest fix. As I use this sort of uh, interaction a lot. Uh, they can't fire through munchers. Just boom, done. That's it. They can't fire through munchers. All I have to do is stick those munchers right there, and then they'll just be pushed over with everything. And then, you know, after the last wave, like, they're too big to drop down. There's not another P switch to queue them up, even if they were small enough to drop. So. I don't... Oh, you know what? Like, what could I possibly do that's not as silly? Because I think I think the monkeys are silly. That's totally what I can do. Boom, fixed. There we go. Problem magically solved. Just just to satisfy my oopsies. Over there. All right. So now I'm gonna drop in. That thing should fire coins, and that's all that's gonna happen. Let's go. Weird solutions to weirder problems. Done. Fucking awesome.
so seem to have found a way to magical proof that section. And it's not affecting the release of the the leaves at all. Like everything is operating the way that it's supposed to. And I maintain a solid face right there. So now, now I'm gonna have to do this one. And to get this one to work, I'm gonna have to finagle it a little bit. the fucking air. Uh, trampolines. <laughs> trampolines and... No bugs. So... Now we're gonna try to get some easy weirdo tech happening. This... I've got enough room to move everything up one space. Player's standing right here. That's fine. The player's standing right here. That's fine. There's no screen scroll. All the way to the bottom of the screen with your floor. Yes, that is absolute bottom. So I can't just place a trampoline there because then they don't. They won't just be suspended in air. No blocks. Which is why I was saying I'm gonna have to get tricky with it. So... I'm gonna put together our experimental chamber. Solid floor, the note block on a track. 
overlapping them. That note block will still bounce anything that touches the top of it. That's that's what we want. We want that bounce area because it creates the kind of weird dynamic behavior that makes the that makes the arena interesting and unpredictable. It creates the chaos that we want. So now I'm gonna see if this magic Koopa can shoot it out while it's overlapping ground tiles like that. Let's go. But story. some terrible angles too. And like the Koopas are hitting it and they're just being flung around wildly. Which is great. It's totally what I want. He blew out that other one and I did not even notice. I have to move to make sure that he's got a shot on it. So now let's try this again. Our experimental controls. Okay, and so it's not going to go through the ground tiles right here. So, I mean, like, it's... It's just not doing it. I can bounce it up into it, and it looks like it's not doing it. Yeah, it's just not happening. That may be exactly what we want. It's a really minor behavior change, but I think that it's... I think that we maintain more by making this one small allowance to add a little more magic hoop proofing than I think we lose in terms of the integrity of the stage by moving everything So let's do that. Let's put this guy in there. The other one. The other one. They're under the Step closer to our total Magic Koopa proof. Serena. Get in there. Get in there. So now. To fix this. which it sits here, second here, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, after the final round, drop it in here. That's great, it's perfect. Single space right there. 
I've not forgotten that block. Trust me, I've not forgotten that block. So, to play. sitting on top of that coin because it'll fall through. Fast forward around. Dang. Okay. Turns back into a block. Does everything explode to death? basically just gonna hang out. Nothing's going to happen. This red launcher over here, piece which will trigger, then that brick up top will turn into a coin. And so, what happens there is that uh, this guy is going to go be harmlessly up and down. <laughs> Gee, please. So it's going to go pretty harmlessly up and down. I may still need to move some of the bricks in the back. But I think I think this is going in the right direction. Let's go. Is that? 
afterward, push that up against the brick and it'll drop through. Right, but see, and it's still so tall that it's pushing through. And I need it to catch it just the right time. Oh my god, if it works. Oh, it works! Oh man, the timing on that is perfect! Like, the, that functioning depended entirely on the, the red blaster falling from the impact on top at the precise moment that the P-switch was triggered. Like, that enables the entire thing to continue as intended. So, chill out here. Let this run through, and then I'm gonna drag Mario down uh, once it gets closer to the bottom. So I can see if it fires out the damn uh, clouds that I want. see the back side of the pipe. I kind of like that. I probably put an arrow or something to the egg. But just the idea of, of doing it like this does kind of complicate the use of
We still have... We have a brief moment of exposure there. I don't want no exposure. Let's see, if we do this, we have a brief moment of exposure for the rest of the pipe. This should not be the first time that I had some janky pipe things. Can you enter through the plaster like that? Yep. You can enter through a one-way wall that's behind the pipe. Like... Pipes don't give a shit. Let's put down... Again. Check it. Let's go! Boom. Yeah, you just have to get it in there. You just have to position it correctly. I mean, once the cloud launcher is down there... I mean... You really just have, like, the rest of your time to get in there... ...and to get in there. So that... talking about this one, right? Up in the entryway? Pretty sure that's the one you were talking about. But yeah, good catch on that. So... This is this is our playable state again. Like we've used the blasters on tracks to functionally replicate the one-way walls without actually using one-way walls. We've basically taken everything out of here that a magic Koopa could turn into something that can kill you, except for you know the spiny hats and the feathers. Or the leaves. So... Okay, 
Okay, so now we have these like super, super bare bones platforms. It's those with. We have options. This is, uh. It's very modern. Boxes. I don't really like the boxes. The windows. I do actually like the windows a lot. Probably. I can. I can just shake the ones right over here. Look for a window. That actually simple, visually distinct, <laughs> matches the blasters actually, which is really nice. Can. 
I think. music. Knocked off the bottom of it. God, what the hell? I'm gonna mess with this out here too, but I mean, that's all purely aesthetic. Where did it go? Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh my god! Why the cloud? Why? Oh my god. How is it that the Goombas were dying in the first wave? That's a good question. I didn't realize there were Goombas dying in the first wave. Mic muted for a minute. Lindsay came home. Dog said loud. So yeah, so the Goombas aren't making it through the blaster in the first round. You're totally right about that. Where are they? They're on top. In the next round, they're on the bottom and they're making it through. Okay, it looks like the way that they're kind of being pushed through, uh, pushed through the the blaster adjacent to them is killing them against the ceiling on the second one. So let's try that. I mean, it's not like anything can be there otherwise. Let's go! <laughs> Oh, almost. Almost. I can... So I guess my options are either use a red blaster... Which... I think the red blaster is really gonna change the way that it operates. Because it still has to go through that I think that's gonna... That's gonna eat the momentum. So, I don't think they're gonna fly across them. Thank you, Dubs. Yeah, I actually, I really like the skull platforms on this one, too. I feel like, I feel like they really make this one, because they're just so weird. Okay, man, it really is getting the shot for the, <laughs> those Goombas. That worked better than I expected it to. It's fast firing from the top spawner. So, it would literally just make it so that the first wave was the only one that was firing enemies right at your spiny pickup. I don't like that. You know, the first wave, I always try to make it kind of a, kind of a gimme wave. Like, the first wave is to warm you up for the rest of it. The first wave shouldn't be the one that's just wrecking your shit. I think... I think I can get away with swapping these. It's not Everything. 
Yeah, that's that's actually more consistent with the way that everything else is put together, too. Sense. It's goddamn silly. Spawner living through the final. If someone took the other shell and threw it so it went back and forth on the bottom, that is. Expected, and that's also what the no blocks are for. Okay, so the Goombas are making it out from the middle. Not even a thing. That's actually how far up are they making it?
this goes. Thanks for hanging out. 